what I thought we might do um, in our reflection today, since we're still in Lent, um, we're in the fifth week of Lent, we've got uh, Holy Week coming up next week, um, is to follow up a little bit on the reflection that we had just two weeks ago, which was also Lent. And if you recall, uh, in that reflection, we were reflecting on how Jesus' ministry can properly be called a needs-based ministry. And what we took for that was the, the scene that appears in all three of the Synoptic Gospels, where the scribes notice that Jesus is having a meal with people who are outside the law. And they call that to the attention of his disciples and say, and ask them, how come your master is doing this? And Jesus overhears them, and he uses the metaphor that he is like the physician. The physician comes for those who are not well and who need healing. The physician does not come for those who are well. Now, if the scribes were open, they could realize that that included them. But, as we discussed, because of the way they use religion uh, and the, uh, their understanding of the law and their relationship with God, they didn't appreciate Jesus' uh, point. But we reflected on how Jesus' ministry is still a needs-based ministry. And we're invited during Holy Week especially to bring our needs to the cross of Jesus so that he can heal us and give us the strength we need uh, to walk this path. Well, you might have noticed on Sundays that we are now in the, uh, the A cycle here at St. Francis Xavier in our readings because we have candidates and catechumens who are preparing for full incorporation into the church. And when that is the case, the church asks parishes that have candidates and catechumens to use the A cycle even though we are in the C cycle. And the A cycle has the wonderful uh, St. John's Gospel um, faith-based stories. Uh, the woman at the well, the man born blind, and Lazarus. In each case, um, I think we can make the case that Jesus is in John's Gospel doing the same thing he did in the Synoptics by underlying the fact that his ministry is a needs-based ministry. Depending on how you count them, there are some something like seven different times where Jesus says, I am, and then he says the word that's the solution to a given problem. And in each case, it's uh, over and against a need that somebody has. So, for example, um, if we're thirsty, he's the living water. If we're in darkness, he is the light of the world. If uh, we've lost the way, he is the way, the truth, and the life. If we're hungry, he is the bread of life. If uh, we need guidance, we're not sure where to go, he is the good shepherd. If we th uh, feel threatened by outside forces, we are invited to come through him, he is the sheep gate, and find security inside the sheep gate. Um, the, the, the last probably great one in uh, the, uh, the discourse he's having with his disciples before his arrest, uh, if, if we're wondering uh, how we stay connected with Jesus, he is the true vine. We are the branches. Uh, stay rooted in him and his grace, his spirit will go through us and we'll bear the fruit we, we need to bear. But in each of these cases in John's Gospel, Jesus starts off with a physical, tangible need that the people have. And he addresses it. He takes care of it for them, but then he uses that as an opportunity to talk about something that is much deeper, a spiritual reality. And, and the result, in each case, is an invitation to faith that Jesus is the Messiah. In fact, uh, at the end of the, the whole gospel, beautiful gospel of St. John, it tells us that there were many other signs that were uh, accomplished by Jesus, but these signs are related to us so that we might have faith that Jesus is the Christ, and uh, in our faith in his name, we might have life and not perish. 
So um, it's a beautiful set of IMs that underscores, just like they did in the synoptics when Jesus referred to himself as like the physician, he's, his, his, he comes to us where we need him the most. And again, that's, um, that's, a, that's good news. That's good news for all of us. Perhaps the epitome of the I am uh, categories is the bread of life. You recall he fed the multitude with just a few loaves and a few fishes, and they kept coming back. They wanted more bread, and he used that real tangible need that he took care of to launch into the whole discourse about the bread of life. I am the bread of life that has come down from heaven, and if you receive me, he even said, if you eat this bread, you will not perish, but you will have life ever after um, for eternity. And again, it's a, it's a crunch point. Some people walked away shaking their heads, said, this man is altogether too much. Whereas others began to believe. So that, that's kind of uh, uh, what's uh, operative here in, uh, in St. John's Gospel. So again, part of our Lenten journey, whether we use the synoptics or whether we use... Um, these beautiful stories of the woman at the well who's thirsty, the man born blind who is in darkness, or Lazarus who's flat out dead, whoever we can relate to best, uh, and bring our thirst, our blindness, uh, the areas in our life where there's not life and we need that healing touch of Jesus, to bring it uh, to the cross of Jesus on Good Friday and ask for his healing touch. Uh, many of us have looked at the calendar and said, wow, Lent is almost gone. I kind of blew it this year. I didn't make a good, uh, good Lent. Not a problem. Uh, Palm Sunday, walking with Jesus into Jerusalem is a good time to uh, regroup and to have a very good Holy Week and to do just this. Uh, understand that Jesus' ministry is a needs-based uh, ministry and we're invited uh, on Holy Week to bring our needs to Jesus. And inevitably, he will either heal us, uh, he will remove obstacles, or he will give us the grace to carry the obstacles that life gives us. And in all cases, our faith in the name of Jesus as our Messiah will strengthen.